Moral makes an Austria guide. Austria removed from game. I still got it. Greetings I, the War Owl greets you. Once again, the ever-prescient, all-knowing sage of Counter-Strike has slyly predicted the course of future events. Sub-Zero is the worst, or rather I should say the least played map. If, if like they change the map pool, this is probably the map they'd remove because I know that Valve goes by the numbers. The two maps with the lowest play time and both winter maps in the winter, Sub-Zero and Austria, have been removed from the game. Did I somehow supernaturally predict the future, or even more cleverly, subtly change the course of events through suggestion? The purpose of this video is to discuss how this decision was made. As with most of Valve's decisions, it was done purely using data. In the dev blog post, they write, make sure to vote on your favorites with your playtime. That's not subtle. Two new maps will soon be hitting the competitive map pool, Abby and Zoo. You can play them right now in deathmatch and casual in order to prepare. Abby was a submission to the Mapcore mapping competition of which I was a guest judge. I remember putting Abby down as the most competitively viable map and I'm happy to see its inclusion in the map pool. The map has a standard four square setup, but there's no way to get to the terrorist rotate positions without taking mid. This is the greatest flaw of the map. Terrorists do not rotate around take positions and look for weak spots. You either go A, you go B, or you take mid and then do a split. Think of Mirage, for example, which has a similar layout. Terrace can go through B apartments, down into underpass, and then up through connector into A. There's nothing like this on Abbey. Still, the map has well-designed angles and interesting bomb sites. Zoo is an old favorite from my live streams. We play this map all the time during the subscriber games. It's a fantastic looking map, complete with realistic zoo exhibits, monkey sound effects, and informational plaques to learn about meerkats. While being a great looking map, it doesn't play like a competitive map. That's never bothered me, it's fun. However, we do have to deal with the reality that it's now gonna be in the competitive map pool. You can play it ranked. Vertigo kind of makes a return in wingman form. The old forgotten classic has been gutted and defiled like an amateur archeologist making a sea serpent from mastodon bones. Be careful maps. If you start to lose popularity, you may end up in wingman being played by hack versus hack. I look forward to the Aztec version, though I much prefer an Aztec themed danger zone map to be honest. The fact that A site is over here and looks like this despite being unaccessible tells me that they either tried to fix up Vertigo and then gave up, or the prodigal son will one day return. An ever-changing map pool is a great thing for Counter-Strike. It keeps the game fresh. The problem with using play time to determine which map to axe is that new, competitively viable maps are not going to be given a chance. Queuing for a new map is a risk. If I play Mirage all day long, I get great map knowledge, I become global elite level Mirage player. One day I'm like, hmm, let's play Train. I've never played Train before. I'm like a Gold Nova level Train player on a global elite account. This is how the phenomena known as Vertiglobals came to be. People would queue only for Vertigo, learn all of the secrets and all of the tricks, and then use that map knowledge to win every single game and rank up to Global Elite. Now I've given this suggestion before, I'm gonna give it again, because I think it would solve this problem. Take the current competitive matchmaking mode and turn it into an unranked matchmaking mode. Then you can add a new competitive matchmaking mode where you can't decide what map you want to play. You could have a map pool of like seven to nine maps and allow the player to veto one or two of them. This way the player is deciding on a limited number of maps that they don't want to play instead of an unlimited number of maps that they do want to play. Then, whenever you decide to change the map pool, you take the most vetoed maps and get rid of those and replace them with something else. This fixes the problems we talked about, it also increased the variety of maps that are being played, and it maintains some player choice. Now, I don't have the data for this because I'm not secretly a Valve developer who's trying things out in the community before we implement them. I mean, they implement them. But it could also reduce queue times because everybody's queuing for the same block of maps. Oh, and 
rank would actually line up with skill. Is this a change that you would like to see in the game? I can will things into existence, so I'd like to check in with you first before I do my rain dance. The current system works fine. It's definitely better than what they used to have, and if you want to play on the tournament map pool, you're probably going to play on the third-party systems like Face It that have 128 tick servers anyway. There's maybe no reason at all for my suggestion. It's just we've been playing on the same maps for so long, they finally introduced a few more, and they immediately die. One thing Valve may not have considered is that going purely by the numbers opens you up to something called brigading. Let's do the math. We got about 100,000, 200,000 of you watching this right now. Fair to bet that a lot of you play the game regularly. You know what that means. We can kill a map. Let's kill cobblestone. From now on until the end of the map pool switch, don't queue for cobblestone. If we work together and stay resolute in our cause, we can change the world. So don't queue for cobblestone. It deserves to die. Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl and I still have no closer. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about diabetes. Have a good day.